Well, I want to turn to the US and take you straight to the floor of the Senate because Senator Chuck Schumer just speaking there after the announcement of the death of the uh, veteran politician, Diane Feinstein. Uh, there's Chuck Schumer. He's described her as a legend. So let's put the microphones up. Senate floor and far beyond politics itself. So today we grieve. We look at that desk and we know what we have lost. But we also give thanks. Thanks to someone so rarefied, so brave, so graceful a presence served in this chamber for so that someone like that sir. Well, if we lose the pictures there from the Senate, we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, but let's go to our correspondent, Barbara Plett Usher, who's there in Washington. Uh, well, we dipped in, Barbara had a really powerful moment. We saw Chuck Schumer turn to the, the empty seat and the empty desk there after the announcement uh, that Diane Feinstein uh, has died at the age of 90. And she's described uh, straight away as a, as a titan of the Senate. And that's absolutely no exaggeration, is it? I think that is very much how she's viewed and actually Matthew while Chuck Schumer was speaking the flag on the Senate building was lowered to half staff to commemorate her she was the oldest sitting senator 30 years she was elected in 1992 uh, and she was a very formidable woman she very much passionately defended the liberal policies that were important or liberal priorities that were important to her state of California but she was also known um, to be quite pragmatic, to reach across the aisle to, Dem to, to Republicans in order to find a middle ground to pass legislation. And she did not suffer fools gladly. She had a reputation for sort of zinging re retorts uh, when she felt that, that, uh, she, was, uh, that she was getting opposition. Uh, but her, her uh, sort of bipartisan work did help her to get a number of legislative achievements. One of the most significant was that she was the one who authored a federal uh, ban on assault weapons in 1994. Now that expired after 10 years, but it's never been able to be done again. She was also the first female head of the Intelligence Committee, and under uh, that uh, role, she uh, led, a led an investigation into post-9-11 CIA uh, interrogation tactics, and that report led to anti-torture legislation. So she had uh, quite a bit uh, of achievements to, to notch up, and she was a presence uh, that was very much felt, although um, she's 90 years old she, and she, her health had been declining in recent years and it was very much a public decline because she didn't resign from the Senate. Yes, she only last year or earlier in the year made it clear that uh, she would be uh, standing down at the end of this particular term in 2024. So uh, that is in terms of the timeline of her career, but it's a career full of firsts. Uh, the first uh, female mayor of San Francisco, one of the first women elected uh, to the Senate from California. That's right, a trailblazer uh, in, in gender politics achievements. Like you said, the first uh, female mayor of San Francisco. She was uh, the first uh, female candidate of a major party in California's govern uh, governorship elections. She was the first of two women in California elected uh, to the Senate. She was the first female head of the Senate Intelligence Committee. She was the first uh, Democratic head of the Judiciary Committee. Uh, and and the very, very much, um, the, she was elected in 1992, which was known as the Year of the Women, and that as opposed when a number of women were elected. Now, she wasn't a sort of uh, favorite always of feminists, perhaps because of her pragmatic approach, but she said she did know uh, what women were going through, what they were up against, uh, and she had no compunction about following through what she felt uh, she needed to do to get her priorities uh, out there and, and legislated. All right, well, the tributes are pouring in. Barbara Plett Usher there in Washington. Thanks very much for now.